Hi, welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since my last update, mainly because the weather's been shocking. It's been pissing down with rain during my free time. So in between little bits of raindrops, I have managed to do a little bit to the bike. Not very much, but what I'll do is I'll quickly run through what I've done now and what I'm currently waiting for. Big news is nothing huge to report other than I've made some little progress. So what we'll do is we'll start walking through what I've done. Uh, the first of which is I have a new key from Timpsons. If you take your BMW key to Timpsons, they will be able to cut you a replacement key and it does work. Uh, it took a couple of trips because the blank they had had to shave off a little bit extra on this nub that came through. But it does mean you can get a new replacement key for your K series for five pounds, I think they charged me. So that's quite good. Other updates you can see I have gone through and tested everything. Uh, my gear selector now shows the correct amount. All the lights and everything now functions with the exception of the choke light. This is always on, so I'm gonna to have to investigate that switch. Also, it now has been filled up with fresh fuel and does turn over and tries to start. As you can hear, it tries to start a little bit there. So let's try it again. And it will go on like that for a while. It will catch a few times, but not entirely. So what I'm going to do is I've got a few parts on order to investigate that. So I'm going to check the fuel pressure. Uh, so I've got a fuel pressure regulator coming, which then will, when I've got that off, I will then take out the injectors to make sure they're injecting cleanly. And I'll go through and check all the spark plugs. And I've actually got a new set of spark plugs coming as well. What I've also done down here is I have fixed the fuel filler cap so it goes around the right way and you can see when you open it it drains the water around into the drain hole now and I can actually hear it coming at the bottom whereas previously that wasn't happening it was flowing up here falling over the top and going through so the fuel filler cap now is seemingly draining correctly I have to kind of sometimes coax it because my bike's on a slight lean but that is correct I've also gone inside, taken all of this off and put in a new fuel filter because I did have one spare and I used the same one as my BMW Boxer. I also went on to Motorworks and I got four new screws here because it's, these uh, four screws weren't great and one of them was really badly mashed. So what I'll do is insert a little kind of thing as we're going through so you can see what I did and why that's had to change. That means now that I'm have consistently good fuel going into the bike. You'll see the calipers are back on. Uh, what I found out when I took the calipers off, I took them to inside and I gave it all clean. The pins that the brake pads ride on were completely rusty, real terrible state, and the spring was all a bit terrible. So what I did is I cleaned them up. I'll include a video of that here or some pictures rather of what the state it was. And I cleaned them up using my wife's ultrasonic cleaner for her braces. I actually put the cleaning solution in the Ziploc bag along with the pins, popped it in the uh, water solution, just let it run for 15, 20 minutes. Most of the rust came off. So it feels like they're moving better now. I've still yet to fully prime the system and bleed it to find out if the pins were the only problem or it's actually the master that might also be a problem. But they're back on the bike now and maybe one thing's sorted. So once I get a bit more time to actually bleed the system properly and run brake fluid through, we'll find out if that works. Otherwise, they may need a complete rebuild. There is also a new side stand. This is a side stand that I picked up of Facebook Marketplace for 20 quid. I had to buy new springs for it, uh, which were two pounds on Motorworks but they are now, allows me to use the side stand. 
I don't tend to use it that much because it's really funny when I'm moving stuff about so I can access the garage, uh, sorry not garage, the shed I've got here where I keep a lot of my spare parts. It allows me to wheel the bike out, wheel it back without having to hoist it around the side stand, uh, sorry the main stand. Because I don't really want to keep it on the side long term because it allows too much oil to drain through on the cylinders and makes it quite smoky and start up. Considering I have a lot of start up issues, I want to kind of fix them in a known state so consistency in this main stand is what i'm shooting for but it does work the only issue i've got when it goes up it makes contact with the exhaust so this is the issue it makes contact with the exhaust as it goes up and i need to figure out a way around that also as it comes down also as it comes down it doesn't really lock into place so I'll have to kind of put it down, lean the bike, and then its bike supports the weight of it coming out. But the springs do bring it all back up, so it's just making contact with the exhaust. You also see the covers are off there because I've started to check for spark. You actually heard it briefly uh, making a few kind of ignition noises. I've checked spark on one. <laughs> and the order of the actual lines, because I wasn't sure if the spark plug leads were corrected up incorrectly, and that's as far as I got before it pissed it down. So I need to spend a bit more time taking them all off and checking for spark on each of the uh, heads, uh, sorry, each of the leads. But the leads do appear to be in the correct order. One, two, three, and four. So it goes one there, four behind, and I believe two and three. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I've done so far. I mean, the big wins realistically are repairing the battery, finding out what's making the calipers stick themselves. It doesn't look to be the pistons, but more of pins everything was running on. So that's gonna be like 20, 30 quid to replace. But if I'm doing those, I might do a full caliper rebuild. I'd like to find out next when I bleed the brakes, if the master up here is working for the front. The rear is perfectly solid. So I just need a couple of hours of dry time to really have a go at this and get that bled nicely. I also need to start looking at why it's not firing. It could be a case of a bit more dirty fuel. I have a jump pack and the battery needs recharging since the last time I tried a few things. So I need to take the battery out and give that a charge, give that another go. But as you can hear, it does want to start, I think. I think it may be that the injectors are just a bit sticky and giving them off and a bit of a clean would probably tilt that out, sort that out rather. Um, maybe even the spark plugs are just a bit shit. I mean, I've been told they've been replaced and the air filter's been replaced and the fuel filter's been replaced and the fuel pump, but how long ago, what's stated in, I'm gonna take all that off and have a good look. What I really want to do is just get this consistently starting. And I don't think we're that far away. Once it's starting, I can then sort out the brakes but I've made some progress. Uh, I've also been shopping for a few things. Let's say I've got a fuel, uh, fuel injection pressure, fuel pressure regulator test dial thing. It's 25 quid off eBay. I don't know how great it's gonna be, but it should let me see how much pressure is going into my fuel lines. It goes up in line. So the uh, connects between down here before the fuel rail. So I should be able to see that there's pressure there and what it's like. I've also got a compression tester coming so I can check compression on all the cylinders. Again, that could be where I'm getting a bit one or two cylinders fire, but not all of them. So once those parts turn up, I need a few hours of dry time to test that out. My focus really should be on getting it started, but while those things are waiting to turn up, I've been shopping. I've got a new fuel cap coming. Um, I'm going to bleed the front brakes and I'll try and do a few little things. Hopefully that gives you up to date of where I am. I'm going to give this one last go so you can hear exactly how it's almost starting because it makes me excited. And that's the bang.
doesn't do that very often, which means a lot of unburnt fuel, I think, is getting through. Actually, not that hot. And I can't feel any of the cylinders are particularly hot. But it does mean that I think some fuel is getting through, whether all of it is, whether the spark is a problem. The other thing I have investigated is whether the water temperature sensor at the front here needs to be replaced. The connector's looking a bit ropey, so I might see that under investigation. Again, if anyone's got any ideas of where I should be looking, say my primary concern is getting the engine running. I think it's close. I think it wants to start. I think realistically all I'm missing is either a good clean spark or fuel. So hopefully we'll get some parts through the post. We'll have a little test and we'll see from there. All right, thanks very much.